What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks by the Numbers. Today is Monday the 13th, and I just wanted to do a quick update here on uh, D-Wave Quantum, ticker symbol QBTS, listed here on the New York Stock Exchange. Stock right now, a touch below 74 cents. It's up about 2.5% right now. We have about 30 minutes left to go before the close. As we can see, uh, we did drop down out of this symmetrical triangle, as I mentioned, maybe last time in the video, and... Um, we dropped all the way down to about 57 cents. I marked this line here of 60 cents as a key level that I said, see, it was right around that gap. And I said that if it breaks, it, you know, it's most likely going to pull back and drop down to this level before potentially bouncing. And as we see, we dropped down to about 57 cents. And then we rallied to about 97, 98 cents. And then we've kind of been slowly stepping down here with the big chunk here after earnings. If we look at the numbers, what we can see is they actually kind of narrowed the losses a little bit and came in above expectations on the EPS loss side. However, we can see they missed by a couple of hundred thousand here on the revenue side. And unfortunately, see, I, I really like the story. And long term, obviously, it, it definitely could work out and it could be a winner because supposedly they're saying that it is, uh, you know, I don't want to know, I don't want to say the word revolutionary, but it can just be helpful, the quantum computing. And basically, it can happen really across the board in all sectors. So that's why down the road, they really could start chunking up the revenue. Tens of millions, hundreds of millions could start coming into the company. And then, of course, the stock is going to be worth significantly more than its current value. But right now, they're very inconsistent with the revenue, and that's why they're, they're kind of beating the stock up and just bringing it down to the, lo the absolute lows that it could be. You know, right here, we have a market cap. Now, we're under 100 million. Now, we're sitting here at 73 million for the market cap. And the problem is, we looked at last time, the problem really is the liabilities currently. Because again, this is the hardest part for basically every company, right? It's when you're first starting out. Now, you're only generating... Uh, you know, we looked at some of these other tech companies, you know, now they're only generating like a couple hundred thousand or like D-Wave Quantum, only a couple of million. And, you know, the problem is when you're just bringing in that little revenue, you can't say, oh, my stock, my, my company's worth, uh, you know, 600 million. It's like, no, you, you don't deserve a market cap of that valuation. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. When they're overinflated, right, when they're overinflated, and we know that it's negative, and of course, more negativity comes out, it just adds to the list of catalysts and the reasons as to why we could bring those down. And that's why as soon as I looked at it and I saw how low the revenue was, but more importantly, how inconsistent it is, I mean, you know, that, that's why I felt it, it was definitely going to come down to the 60 cent level before going up. And, uh, Again, missing by about 11% on the revenue side, losing $0.64 cents a share. We can see the EPS kind of mixed. However, it looks like it's making the U-turn here, even on the estimates, and starting to climb. And we can see that they came in with a nice little beat there. But again, as we see, you know, just kind of bouncing around 1.5 million, 1.7 million. Then we come in with 2.5 million. Interestingly enough, though, I will say after they... Here, let me find the exact numbers for you guys. Because they spoke about, uh, no, where is the, right, bear with me, bear with me, here we go, right, D-Wave Quantum sees fiscal year 2023 revenue 10 to 11 and a half million, okay, now, this is kind of in line with the original forecast. Just keep that in mind, okay? 10 to 11 and a half million. And if we come over here, though, and we come to earnings, see what I mean? We've been, in, we've been consistently missing on the revenue side, right? And I told you guys that kind of in this state of infancy here with these newer companies, the, the revenue, in my opinion, the revenue kind of trumps the EPS, but it also depends how bad the losses on the EPS side are, right? And we recently saw a situation like that with Plug, P-L-U-G, where like the revenue is kind of slowly starting to tick in, but the problem is they're just losing money like crazy. And, and they need, they need, like I said, chances are someone's probably going to step in if they do have valuable IP, which it seems like they do because the revenue is climbing. So, it, you know, in my opinion, it's probably only a matter of time before someone tries to step in and buy them out and 
you know, they work out on a, on a fair price for both sides. Uh, chances are that's what's going to happen. Uh, if not, like I said in the video, it's probably going to go down before it goes up and it's going to take a while. But anyway, um, as we see here again, uh, D-Wave Quantum, kind of the opposite side of the story, right? We have the EPS mostly coming in above expectations, but the problem is we haven't beaten on revenue expectations yet, right? So that's kind of an issue. That See, that's what I mean. That's a huge negative, and it's an understandable reason as to why the stock is being held down. But more importantly... 4.77 million for Q4 of 23, right? That's what so supposedly forecast are estimating this company is going to close out the year in Q4. Well, if we add up our revenue reported so far, what is this? Uh, this and this is 3.29 million. Uh, now we're at uh, 5.7, 5.85 million. And then if we add this, we'll be at nine ten six ten point six two million ten point six two million but wait hold on what did we say i forgot i forgot i i just forgot what the numbers are ten point six two million okay so we actually are in that range i i, I don't know why i added the numbers up before i don't know maybe uh, my mind was a little slow but so now we're go it's now supposedly we're going to come in that range there estimated of 10 to 11 and a half million which of course is a pretty decent sized range and the original forecast as we see here 10.71 million so see that's why they kind of it, it was 10.7 and it looks like they're going to come in with like 10.5 10.6 and again that's if they actually meet or beat those revenue expectations of 4.77 million or whatever it is let's check 4.77 million right so based on the trend that we're seeing it looks like they're going to miss probably at least anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of this number potentially which means that they're, they're going to post like 4.2 million or something like that so they may even miss that that uh lower end benchmark of that 10 to 11 and a half million that was just uh forecasted there but uh, more importantly, they will most likely miss on this annual number here of 10.7. But again, moving forward, we looked at this last time when we originally checked in on the stock. We can see the forecast moving forward over the years begin to start leaping up for the company. And we can see here basically more than a double here going from 23 to 24 up to almost 23 and a half million for the year. And then again, more than a double up to north of 59 million. And then basically a triple up to 170 million. So again, now what this comes down to is that they have to show the proof in the pudding. They have to actually begin to come out and start beating these expectations on the revenue side. And as we see here moving forward now, revenue begins to chunk up four and a half north of five, north of six million. So that's what I mean. The company now really needs to kick it into gear and almost kind of, I, I, I want to say it doesn't matter what they report this quarter. However, as we see, this is the highest um, estimate so far so it, you know if this is the highest estimate and they happen to beat it that's going to be a you know we're going to have a really good reaction in the in the price of the stock uh probably for several days after the report not just an initial pop and it's similar to what i said with stem if you remember i know a lot of you watching may be holding a stem and obviously the stock is dropping down hitting new lows and everyone's down on the position but remember what i said Re revenue estimates i think uh off the top of my head i may be confusing it with something else but i think estimates were like 180 million or something like that and they came in very light they came in with like 130 140 million and i literally said that was going to happen i said this i said this is a huge chunk in estimates from the analysts here on the revenue side so if they miss big they're going to chunk down big but if they beat big the stock is really going to take off and obviously we kind of got the shit end of the stick on that one and the stock ended up dropping down and now it's down into the twos when it was holding in the threes so that one that's what i mean that's going to take some time but now even though it's at lows inside of the next one to two quarters revenue estimates are still going higher and they're expecting bigger and better things from the stock so if they're able to beat one of these next one or two estimates the stock is probably going to rally back to where it was and even potentially higher because obviously the more revenue that comes in the more valuable the company is worth and that's kind of what we're seeing here with d-wave quantum so that's why with 477 now their highest estimate if they happen to come in and they post like 495 or like 5.1 million 
trust me when I tell you the stock is going to start chunking up because technically even though you could even say it's fair valued what we're seeing now is that the greater estimates are coming in the better that the stock is performing it's actually outperforming these highest estimates on paper to date so that's why very very good sign and um sometimes it's just consistent positive catalysts that pump up the value of the stock but 72 million here so i know a lot of people may say that it's like fair valued because if they're going to bring in 10 11 for the year you know they're trading what's that like seven times revenue but you know they really beat the stock up and the problem here in my opinion was the liabilities as we see here outpacing assets on the short and the long term and the debt here even though it kind of pulled back a little bit for uh 21 to 22 we can see that you know it's almost 19 million and it doesn't seem like a lot but again we're talking about only a 70 million dollar company right so that that's what i mean we're talking about like 25 27 percent of the quote unquote value of the current company is debt so that's obviously a negative um uh, there there are a couple of positives though we can see this is like as of last quarter this is the most gross profit that they that they took in here a little over one and a half million uh, operating expenses, as we see, have been slowly dropping down for the last three quarters, even though revenue brought in has consistently been increasing. So this is why the company definitely has some good things. But again, it's another situation where this is going to take a while. And, you know, if you can't handle the emotions of yourself to watch it go down first before it goes up, then obviously this may not be something for you. Again, we're technically dealing with a speculative situation, and we could potentially be dealing with a reverse stock split down the road. They already received their notice that they are no longer compliant. Obviously, as you see, the stock is 73 and a half cents, right? They need to maintain that dollar value. So only time is going to tell, but that but that's what I mean. Right now, for this company to save itself, hopefully, so that they don't have to enact a reverse stock split, they need to come in and they need to start beating on those uh revenue expectations and they really need to start bringing the money in but uh as we see here over the quarters look at the debt it was down to about 18 million in change and has since really chunked up here 33 almost 47 and a half million the one thing i will say though if we look at the assets and liabilities here for the last quarter we can see now that assets are currently outweighing liabilities and I always told you guys, assets minus liabilities yields equity. And as we see here, we have positive equity now, which now translates to a positive book value, right? So we were negative, negative book value, meaning they could have brought the stock down to five cents. And technically on paper, it would have been justified. But now we have positive book value of six cents. So again, the problem is if they keep missing revenue, then they absolutely could chunk the stock down to 50 cents, 40 cents, and again it could potentially get much worse before it gets better but i will say as of last quarter here now having a positive book value in my obviously in my opinion i mean that's a very good sign you know if you ask anybody that's going to be a good sign to them right but uh i wanted to come over here to the statistics real quick <clears throat> excuse me the uh, price to sales now sitting at 11.6 as we see that was kind of the low uh, going back to March of 23. See, now we, we have an actual price-to-book ratio here, not since uh, about a year and a half, almost two years ago here. Now we're up to almost 13 times book value. Uh, as you see, enterprise value basically in line with the current market cap. But uh, our top three here, return on assets, equity, and invested capital, have obviously really chunked downwards. However, again, we can see the gross margin percentage, as we see, was dropping down to 26, and now has since become, about begun rebounding, and we're almost at 60% here on the gross margin, which is almost the best that it's been. So that, that's why I'm saying the company does have some positives going on. They need to start bringing in this revenue, though. I cannot keep saying it enough. But the operating margin as well, we can see minus 1,500% uh, and then minus 1,200, now a little over minus 700. So this is what I mean. A lot of these fundamentals are definitely trending in the right direction. But again, can you stomach the fact that we could potentially seriously drop down further from here before we begin rebounding? And more importantly, if you're already in the stock, What's what what you need to know is you need to have more cash on hand if you really truly believe in this company 
for the long term. If you think quantum computing is really going to take off and this company is going to start chunking in again, you know, 50, 100, 300 million revenue, you know, every quarter, every month. Do you, do you really see that growth happening? Because if you do, what you're going to need is you're going to need consistent income and cash on hand. Because if you're really playing it for the long term, you're going to want to ideally consistently add to the position to try to lower your cost basis. So if you own this at like a dollar eighty, and obviously now you're down huge, like my you know my question to you is if this now chunks down even further, and let's just say hypothetically they miss revenue next quarter, if the stock goes down to like forty five cents, the question is, do you have the cash available to add to the position and seriously lower your cost basis? Because if you're going to play it for the long term. You, obviously, that's the ideal situation to do it. If you own this up at two, three dollars, and you have no cash coming in, and you're just holding and waiting, well, then unfortunately, it 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 may be a while. That's basically what I'm what I'm trying to say here. EBITDA, once again, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, as we see, was minus fifteen hundred percent as well. Slowly climbing, minus twelve hundred, minus seven hundred, and the net margin as well, minus fifteen hundred. Minus 1,500, minus 600. So a lot of these numbers are trending in the right direction. They just really need the revenue to start chunking in. The inventory turnover sitting at 182, not the highest it's been, but not the lowest it's been. But I do like the asset turnover, as I mentioned. Now, uh, assets are now currently outweighing liabilities. As of last quarter, we have positive book value, and we can see the asset turnover has jumped up 2.15. So definitely having uh, a lot of positives and of course this is much more of a longer term play but it looks like we did make about a double bottom there at the 57 cents and we began to jump up here uh this is my trend line basically drawing uh this top to the next top i believe so we could potentially have another rejection here soon and um again unfortunately they missed on the revenue side. So i i think if they beat on the revenue side even though again book value is only six cents so it could technically go lower but i think if they beat here on the revenue sign i i, I think the short sellers might have left it alone i really do because they might have said okay the, the company's potentially starting to beat now you know this this could be the reversal in the numbers they they can really start growing from here and uh beating estimates so you know it's not it's not worth risking on the short side anymore so that's why uh, yeah, yeah. Again, it really comes down to the numbers, and unfortunately, they dropped the ball. Switching over here to stock charts very quickly, and I'll let you go. As we see, uh, random ad, we have rejection off of the 50-day moving average here, and we retested down to the bottom Bollinger Band, but again, double bottom, so we've been chunking up here, and it looks like a potential rejection on the mid Bollinger Band, 78 cents. That was a high today, 78 cents, and now we're sitting here at 73 cents. It's about 15 minutes left to the close, so chances are it's going to close below that, and that'll uh, that'll be a rejection off the mid. But as you see, the last time that happened, it chunked up the next day, and here the rejection, and then it chunked back up the next day. So we could potentially have uh, another bump tomorrow, maybe up to like 80 plus cents before it decides to start selling off again. Uh, it does look like the MACD is pretty much flat potentially about to intersect there so we're going to have to play it day by day rsi sitting at 43 and a half so we are kind of climbing here but we do have a little bit more room to go if the rsi wants to keep climbing and here on the weekly rsi is only 40 so we've been in a big sell-off now for the last several months so that's why i mean like it could rally back up to 120 and, and try to retest that that 50 day moving average but chances are it's probably going to continue to trend lower uh unless the company comes out again with some more positive catalysts um you know just potentially you know signing one or two more clientele and just you know increasing their their backlogs and their bookings and you know i know they were mentioning you know technically like year over year a lot of the numbers are up but again we only went from like 1.7 million up to like 2.3 2.4 million now Technically, we're only talking about a difference of a couple of hundred thousand, but of course, in percentage wise, we are looking at 40, 50 percent growth technically year over year for a lot of these numbers. So that's why the company is moving in the right direction. But the real problem with these companies, you know, I said it once and I'll say it again. The problem is they are overvalued out of the gate. 
And as you see, a company like this that was that high in value, like so many others, but the difference is they really weren't doing any business. This is why they immediately drop down, right? Then you get like one or two little positive catalysts that completely explodes the stock because everyone and their brother was short on it. And now at these highs back here at two, three and change, everyone who was here and down big is now getting out to either take small losses or take their profits. And now it slowly chunks down over time because it's overvalued and the company keeps missing on the revenue side. So it's worth less and less and less. So chances are they are going to bring it down before it goes up. However, biggest feather in the cap here, in my opinion, book value now, as of the last quarter, sitting at positive six cents for really the first time since we started looking at the stock. So definitely good news for a lot of you shareholders. But again, it could get worse before it gets better. And, um, you know, unfortunately, it's it's some things are just out of our control, but I, I, I really do wish you all well with this one, and, and I hope over the years uh, their technology, their IP does take off, and, you know, they get more and more orders, more and more clientele, and, and the stock is able to, you know, slowly rally back up to 2 $3 and change, and, you know, you guys start to uh, appreciate the fact that you had the, the foresight to see a good thing coming. And, uh, you know, over the years, you remain patient and hopefully it works out for you. Yeah. But I'll end it there. So once again, stocks by the numbers. Thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel and subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. That's how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are very rocky, very volatile, very uncertain. Uh, we recently had news come out over the weekend, right? The U.S. government got downgraded and whatnot. So again, just in the last couple of months, that happened. And then, of course, I think it was back in August, right? We had the, the credit rating of the country and then our banks got downgraded. So this is what I mean. Now, even after this little rally, I think we're basically back at or even higher than where we were before we started selling off. So even with days like today, in my opinion, unfortunately, I'm still pessimistic when it comes to the overall value of the market. And I think that basically same thing, like I'm saying with a lot of these stocks, I think we're going to get worse before we get better. I know people are looking for an end of the year rally. I actually think it's going to be just like 2023 started. I think we're going to sell off going into the end of the year like we did with 22. And then right as the bull dropped, January effect came in, people started buying stocks again, and, you know, we went on a nice rally for several months, uh, starting off 2023, and I think that's what's going to happen with 2024, but that's just my opinion, uh, but that's it, so, you know, thanks for stopping by, I appreciate your time, I wish all of you well, and I'll see you guys in the next vid.